Recently, there's been a lot of talk about streamers and their income revealed in a leak. And one of the top streamers in the world is Blitzstream, also known as Kevin Bordy. He happens to stream in French and he streams also very often. He's part of the chess.com staff. And let's look at his stats on chess.com. He has played 25,148 games on chess.com as of October 15th and almost the same number as Hikaru on the right. Now Hikaru streams several hours a day, maybe between seven and eight hours, several days in a week, and so does Blitzstream. So they're competing on Twitch as well as on the chessboard. Now Kevin is ranked 2810, which is very impressive knowing that he's only a national master. He played almost a grandmaster level in Blitz, right? And that's what I want to focus on. And in the last seven days, I just want to show you that he played 496 games. That's an average of around 71 Blitz games a day. That doesn't count rapid, bullet, or anything he does, but 71 Blitz games a day. So that's really what he does on stream for the most part, right? Now, uh, I had stats against Grandmasters because his rating is really like a Grandmaster. And I would say in the last like nine days, he played 200 GMs, 200 Grandmasters, and he scores around 36% and draws maybe 9% and lose a little bit above 50%, right? So that's kind of his stats um, online. So let's look now at the chess. He loves to play the Scandinavian D5. And lately, he's been trying to do a different version of it, starting with like the Russian or Petrov defense, and here playing D5. And after that, it looks like a Scandinavian, except that you gave up the E5 pawn right away. But anyway, his main defense against E4 is D5. Now, white in this game is played by Grandmaster Gada Kamsky, playing online on October 13th. So just like a couple of days ago, by the time you watch this video. And here, very interesting, white is castling short, you know, and just playing d3 while usually d4 would be the main line. And now the game continues, and Kevin Bordy, Blitzstream, loves to attack. You can see that he's ready to attack, and he really wants to have a quick win. That is style with black. He's not going for... Um, you know, a position on squeeze is looking to attack. But here, Queen E1 played, and Gala goes for the end game. Now, Gala Kemsky is a grandmaster, of course, and a former world chess challenger for the top, top title of um, world champion. Now, they play an end game, and at first look, you would say, well, uh, this stream is gonna double on the D file. I don't see any pawn weakness, so what's going on? And the answer is that bishop. Look at that bishop on h5. It's not doing much and cannot do here. And even if you move it back here, it's just stuck against this pawn. That is white's plan. So let's see that. Bishop retreats. Now the knight comes here, pinning the knight. And here, take, take, bishop e3. So clearly, Gada wants to exchange pieces. And look, you have two weaknesses. These pawns are extremely uh, damaged. And that bishop has no future. The only way you can activate the bishop to play f6, bishop f7, and e5. That takes a lot of time. So that's an end game, yes, but white is better. So here, check. Now, that knight is definitely superior to that bishop. I think there's no contest here. And here, blunder by black. So here, normal move would be probably rook d6, trying to get some uh, uh, fight. But here, rook c4 played, and after rook a c1, rook d8, simply king e2, very calm move. Now the bishop's trying to come to life, and then here, black resign. So why is that? Well, the rook here is stuck. Yeah, the bishop can be activated, but that rook is completely uh, without any escape. So let's say if you wait a move like that, you can play king d2, protecting c3. And now you can go on a rampage, open the line like that, and black has no defense. That rook can only be exchanged against the knight, but white is completely winning. So that was a very powerful, uh, I think, display. And you can see that with bishop b5, 
and the bishop here, black was under pressure in this early endgame. Let's see one more game with the Scandinavian. So here with white, we have another grandmaster named Honest Girl, uh, ranked 2829 on chess.com. So there's rumors out there that Honest Girl is an anagram from uh, Nigel Short, the famous, famous British grandmaster, also a challenger against Kasparov back in the day. But now the game continues, and this is interesting. I would think knight f3 would be natural, but queen e2 first. And again, the pawn is on d3, so something is up, right? Let's continue. Now, the knight on g6 was to come to f4, so g3 played, logical. And here, f4. Now I understand white's idea. White want to develop the knight here and then play f5, looking for the attack. Now, e6 played, and here, f5, putting pressure right away. Q to castle, I take over here, and this is too dangerous. So here, knight d7 played, and knight fd5, trying to block against the threat in f7. So white took, knight b5, and you can see even though both kings are in the center, the black king here is under tremendous danger. And here, check. Knight f7 and a move 19, black resign because then you can simply take and take the rook and you have a winning position. That was a very short victory with white. Let me show one more game against Grandmasters. And once again, I will show a game against Grandmaster Lovell. So here, this stream played d4, knight f6, and that's his favorite move is bishop g5. He has literally thousands of games with the Tromposki here. And the opponent is a Grandmaster named Cheki2015, another anonymous Grandmaster, I think, ranked 2878. So very strong opponent. And let's see how the game unfolds. All this is theory for the Tromposki. And I would say so far, I like what Kevin Bordy has done, right? Because he has developed the PCs trying to open up or play a5 and black has to develop pieces, right? The king is the center. So here yeah, there's a bishop pair for black, but very interesting to see how black continues. And here 97, okay. And in this position, what would you do, right? So I was thinking maybe you play c6, maybe it's time to castle, right? But no, black goes and pick up the pawn and now pick up a second pawn. So here in this position, I thought that why we continue with e5, trying to blast open the e5, uh, uh, but here blitzstream play f5. And also interesting because if you open the f5, where will the black king go? So black is up to pawn, but the question is, can you resist? So then c5 played, bishop retreats, and here bishop e5. You can see grandmaster level, because when you play f5, you weaken e5, and c5 is a good square. So black is not in a hurry to castle, but takes key position for its pieces. Bishop d7, and now you will think, well, maybe white would take, but you simply take. And g6, it's not easy to get to, right? You cannot come here, and that bishop is blocked by e4. So that's no big deal. So here, Kevin Bordy plays 93 with a threat of 95. That seems stronger c6 play, bishop b3. So I kind of see what white's trying to do, trying to come here and probably do rook f7 with some attack. But here simply take, take a knight e4. Problem is if you want to take here with white, right? You have nine g3 and you're winning the rook. So here queen f3 played, that makes sense. Threatening one more time, f takes g6 and defending g3, but 92 fork. So the queen moves, take, take, and only now long castle. And here, uh, Blitzstream tried attacking d6, but after bishop f5, he threw in the tower. Black has four pawns up and an exchange, and I don't see how you can really attack uh, with the white pieces. And on move 24, Blitzstream re resigned. That was also a very recent game. So I tried to show you how Grandmasters, you know, tackle a very strong opponent and one of uh, the key streamers, you know, streaming chess on, on Twitch.
I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.